Just got back to camp, magnificent day out on the tracks. Fire's going, beers are cold, mate. Got me to thinking about the way in which the four drive industry over the last few years has radically changed. Yeah, exactly, mate. Look, when I first got my little Suzuki Sierra, you know, I was on an absolute shoestring budget. Um, you know, to get mods for that thing, it took me it took me years, and, and I had no no chance of making it the dream rig because I simply couldn't afford to put all the mods on. And um, I, I think that products were a lot more expensive back then, and I think that the industry has changed, and for a, a positive way as well, in that products have become more affordable and that means a lot more people can get out in the tracks and enjoy this cracking lifestyle of ours. Yeah mate, I, I share that same philosophy. When I first bought Shorty, which was not my first four-wheel drive, in fact, before I had the black Shorty that I got now, I had a red one. And I remember saving up to buy a set of spotlights, which were halogen back then, and I reckon when I turned them on, they were two candles. But they took me that long to buy, I was proud as punch of them. But that's all I could afford is those two candles sat on the front. Now, you can go and buy yourself LED lights that light the entire bush up. The industry's really changed. Mate, you and I spend, what do you reckon, we spend over, well, well over six months of the year in the bush, in, in these swags, using these awnings, using these spotlights. We torture, utterly torture those, those winches up the front. Yep, yep. And they don't cost that much money, but they go the distance. Yeah, look, I think Four Wheel Drive Super Centre really has changed the game. I mean, it's not about having all necessarily the bells and whistles. It's about having good quality gear that is affordable. That means that every man can have accessories for his four wheel drive. Mate, couldn't agree more. And the more we travel around, we, what we do a lap of Australia once a year, roughly. At least, and the long way as well. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. The more Adventure Kings gear we're seeing, to me, what that translates to, that's more families affording to get out into the bush and enjoying this lifestyle that you and I absolutely love. Well, mate, I couldn't agree more, and I'll cheers you to that, eh? Cheers, bud. Cheers, mate. The Victorian high country is one of the most iconic four-wheel drive destinations in Australia. Ooh. With its steep as heck goat tracks, rugged rocky terrain, it, mate. Keep going, keep going. and views to die for, there's no wonder we're back to explore once again. Come on! But this time, there's a difference. Allison, eh? I'm going to be driving the camera car. We're down at Woods Point in Victoria. It's absolutely freezing, crisp morning, blue skies above. And this is day one, we camped down here last night, this is day one of our next trip. Absolutely stoked about it. What I wanted to introduce to you is my good mate, Shano. He's had some problems with the Dirty 30 of late, nothing to be worried about. It's gonna be back up on all four wheels very, very soon. But until then, he suggested he rides in with me. Absolutely no way. That was not gonna, I was adamant, that was not gonna happen. He had to find another truck. The only other truck that he could find at last minute, in late notice was, well, come and have a look at this. Come and check this out. Mate, this truck comes on every single trip with us. What is it? It's the camera car. It's the camera car, mate. It's look, it's, it's not any old camera car. This is a sub $10,000 camera car. No yep. lockers. Yep. Just fitted a new set of tyres to it. Yep. And it's got speed dimples. Oh, it's got a lot of those. A lot of speed dimples. What's this hole here, mate? But every four-wheel drive has this, mate. But when wind comes through and you're doing you're doing top speed around 60 k's an hour, wind yes. will actually come in here and yep. clean the dust out of the door cavities. That's amazing. So the basics of this is that you're going to be driving the camera 80. Yes, with the camera crew. Yeah. This is an unsung hero truck usually really of is. our trip. So. It really is. No, I, I've got a lot of respect for this old beastie. So uh, I can't wait to get into it, mate. I wasn't going to miss this trip. Let's do it. We're starting our adventure in the back corner of the Victorian high country, heading from the town of Woods Point to the town of Walhalla. The plan is to encounter plenty of the high country steep climbs and descents and taking some of the history of the region along the way. This is going to be awesome. Before we head off the dirt road, we're dropping some pressures. 18 PSI should do the trick for a smoother ride, added traction and protection against tyre damage. Guiding us for this trip are locals Alan and his son Michael, both from Piranha Off-Road. Nick from Black Series along for some good old trailer R&D. We've got Stu Dog from Wholesale Automatics. Alrighty, well, this is morning one, day one of our summer. High country trip, I say summer in that time because it was well, it's currently 8 degrees at half past 9 in the morning. I don't know what it was when I first got out of the swag this morning, but it's freezing cold now. Just going to see how Shawnee's going. I, of course, am the camera crew's chauffeur for this trip. Copy back there, Shawnee? Certainly do, mate. You comfortable back there? How are the boys? Are they all right? Yeah, good, mate. I'm, look, I'm trying to teach a few tips here and there. Um, they're sort of laughing because I do this every day. And hey, Jared, uh, if you feel at any point you do need to either do one of two things, give Sean tips or abandon the vehicle, feel free to do so, mate. <laughs> Nah, mate, nah, he's, he's loving this. He's, he's absolutely loving this. To sit with a real professional, he's saying, wow, once in a lifetime opportunity here. Nick, how you going back there, mate? Yeah, good, thanks, guys. How's the big truck and the big trailer performing? No dramas after the last trip? No, it's all going well, so um, 
looking forward to this one. Stew dog. I'm actually roaring. I can't wait to get stuck into this. Bit of a summer high country. I can't wait to get out of this valley and up onto a hill. Get a bit of sun. I imagine you're the same. Yeah, mate. It's a bit cold down here in the campsite. You can see the blue sky, so we're looking for some sunshine. So let's get up, get up as high as we can as soon as we can. Speaking of climbing things, Al, Mike, how are you going up there in the front? We are going really well. We're nearly up to the turnoff at Woods Point Pub and heading down towards Knockwood. Looking forward to a bit of an adventure. We've got to pass through Woods Point, a small town that sits on the banks of the Goulburn River. We're on our way to Weber Spur Track and Champion Spur Track, and this is where we can expect our first challenging drive of the trip. What a track! My oh, goodness, some real lumpy, bumpy stuff in it. So I've gone manual over to the Triptronic manual, first gear, low range. It's all about picking your line. We've said it before. Keep plodding along and see how we go. It's not too much further, we've already come up on a section that needs closer inspection. So this section of track is quite technical, it doesn't look that steep, but it really is. It's got a couple of big rock steps and choosing the right line is absolutely critical here. There is two options. Alan, I'll just discuss it now. There's one that's quite off cambered. It does look less steep than this rock face here, but it's gonna be a lot safer perhaps coming up this rock face. First up this section is Michael and Alan. They know this area so well and they also know that it needs some serious concentration. It's all too easy for things to go very wrong very quickly on these steep tracks. Michael has opted to put the locker in for extra traction. And it's worked. What a drive, up and away. They make it look easy. Graham's turning the D-Max. Graham in the D-Max has got a lot less clearance and he's only running 31 inch tyres opposed to the big 80 series 35s. Let's see how he goes. Go back and maybe give that a little bit more. Yep, he's getting a bit held up on that step so he's opted for the winch. Do you want to just winch through this? I agree. You'll notice that we always put the winch dampener right where the hook or shackle goes. That's the heaviest point of the recovery, and that's a good place to put the dampener. There's a couple of big rock step sections. We've had to reset the winch for the second. Graham is trying not to spin the wheels too much and let the winch do most of the work. What he doesn't want to happen is to give the rope slack and then tug back on it, causing more tension than necessary. Okay. Stop there, unhitch. Graham's over the harder section. He can drive it from there, and in the D-Max, the auto has no problem taking off on that steep slope. Good luck with this, boys. He's picked his line and taken on the rest of the hill in style. Good drive, mate. All right, this is a proper little hill. No lockers, of course, in the Audi series. It does have a good set of tires. Two inch lift, it's a perfect touring truck. But it's done a lot of hard miles, but it's set up kind of right, and I think I'm gonna drive this first bit. Go back and do that again, that was just a yeah, little bit more, tiny bit more momentum, tiny bit. You can winch it, come to a brilliant spot there, it's nice and easy. Yeah, we'll go, we'll take the winch out. I've opted for the winch too. So I love about this truck, it really proves that you don't need to be you know, mega rich to own a four wheel drive and, and go and tackle tough tracks and do a lot of touring. You know, this truck is lucky to cost you $10,000. One HZ, it's got a fair few kilometres on it. Doesn't look particularly pretty, but who cares? It gets out there and I'm in the middle of the high country enjoying some of the best tracks in the country. And that's what it's all about. I'm in switching, Shorty, off you go. Just like Graham, I use the winch to get past the big rock steps and then it's time to punt it up the hill. Yeah, we'll pick up the road. Good job, folks. Fantastic job, that was flawless. Here I go, drop the clutch and I'm into it. The camera car has got raw suspension, you see? How good is that? We certainly put it to the test all around the country carrying all the heavy camera gear, and this time, my camping gear as well. Absolute weapon. <laughs> Doesn't stop this track, it just keeps going. This is a bit technical, this bit. That's a cool rig. That's what suspension does, if you ask me. Coil springs allows all those tyres to hit the ground. Gives you traction when you otherwise wouldn't. Ooh, ah. That's cool. Well, mate, that was a good drive on your behalf. When you got up onto this stuff, yep. 
I was like a rodeo clown, I just hung on. There was just dust, I yeah. couldn't see the D-Max. Yeah. Got all the way to the top though, all good. Yep. You just walk out there. Oh, there he is. There he is, he's ready, <laughs> he's ready, he's a bit nervous, I think, I don't blame him. All right, this, let's bring him up. What do you think he's got to go? Same line, nothing you can do different. Yeah. But what, what, we're, what we're on about here, I think is important to, you would not take a camper trailer up this. But not typically, not typically. is R&D for that camper trailer. Yep. So if, if anything goes wrong with it, we know where to strengthen it, or they know where to strengthen it, what to change, how to modify it. If you don't do stuff like this, you're never going to know. Exactly right. I think his best drive here is to get into a good winching position yeah, and exactly. not, not break anything. Exactly, Just, yeah. He's got two lockers in that thing and it's a very cable vehicle. I'll put all of them on. <laughs> I'll put three on if you got them. Stick them all. Nick is no stranger to rigorous R&D testing for Black Series campers, but this hill is a tough, tough test. Have you got? 20 on the rear, 18 at the front. This hill is just too steep for the next vehicle to pull a camper up as well, especially over those rock steps. Because of the weight involved here, we're going to half the load by using a winch extension strap connected to a pulley block. All right, what we've got here is a, uh, obviously a loop now. A lot of people are probably thinking, why didn't we put a shackle in here and attach this to the shackle? Totally can do, but it's just my opinion that that's just one piece of hardware you don't need. By doing that, you just, well, it's just taking another hard thing that's going to go flying through the air if anything goes wrong, out of the equation. But this is going to tighten up on itself. And we'll never get it undone again. So I've just grabbed some gloves out of the recovery kit. I'm going to pop those in there. And then when we're done, that just, as you can see, just gives you a bit of space to try and get in there with a pen knife or something and work this loose again. So what I would have preferred to put in there, believe it or not, is a full dunny roll. For some reason, they just work. Don't have one. Well, I do have one, but it's up in the car. I've only got one. This is day one. You do the math. One dunny roll, day one, in there. Nope. Now assist with driving very slowly and take off. Everyone is well clear here as there's a lot of tension at play. If something lets go, we certainly don't want to be in the way. Yeah, mate, driving well, that's it. Keep those tyres pointed exactly how you got it, mate, and just let the windshield work. Nick's on the second lot of rock steps and he's slowly coming up. Keep coming. Just keep coming if you can. That's it. Keep coming. Keep coming. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Good work. Oh, nice work. He's over them. Now it's time to unhook the winch and put the foot down. Now, you'll notice before I put these gloves in, they're really in there nice and tight, but there's no camera trickery here. With all that weight, that's how easy it is for me to get that undone. If I hadn't done that, that would have bunched up on there. This would have become as one. I would have had to cut it with a knife to get it off. All right. Here you go, my friend. Good luck. You know what, do it. You know, a bit more. Nick's using every bit of traction and momentum he can find to carry him and the trailer up the hill. You know what, don't back off now. Far out. Frigging fantastic. Great drive. Ah, that did it. Yeah. Now for Stew Dog. Gently, gently. Slow and steady wins race. has plenty of experience on these steep high country tracks, but even he is struggling here. So we might need a little bit more clearance there. Just pretty much on that, Stu. I just, just hit that. If it's a little bit of going, I think you'll make that. A little bit of go. Jim, Jim. Yes, he's passed the first set of rock steps, but he's held up on the second. No, we got nothing there. It's out with the winch once again. Stew Dog, would you please take up the slack? I'll be that. Can I hold that? Hey, Jim, are you ready, mate? Oh. I'll be that. Maybe. One straightforward pull and he's up. Now he's going to drive. Right. With the auto, you can simply point and shoot straight up the hill. You can take it a bit easier because he's not going to stall. The auto is just doing its thing. As we crest the top of the hill, we're presented with spectacular scenery. Have a go at this view, mate. Look, I've been in the high country a few times now and these views never get me tired, I love it. The biggest problem I have with these views is I, I'm trying to look left, but I've got to look at the track. Yeah, mate, absolutely stunning. It's moments like this, you really, you really shake your head and say, this is the reason I own a four-wheel drive, you know? 
Oh, 100%. Look, you could hike in here, you could bring a horse in here, maybe even come on a motorbike, but there's no other way you can get the comforts of home like we do, you know, with the swag, you know, everything in it. A couple of beers in a fridge, some steaks, etc., etc. You just can't do that any other way but except in a four-wheel drive, and that's that's what I love so much about it. Speaking of, mate, I'm uh, cooking tonight as well, so forget steaks, because it's not going to be steaks, but it's something else pretty cool. Ah, what have you got, mate? Can you give us any hints? It's a beautiful little meal, cheap to eat, and um, I reckon you guys might just enjoy it. We follow Michael and Alan to one of their weekender camps. It's a great little clearing amongst all the tall gum trees. Camp setup gets underway immediately. Graham and I are in our trusty swags, and Nick goes about setting up the Black Series. He's put the awning up too, because you never know when it might rain up here, and I'm going to be cooking up a storm on the pull-out kitchen. We're down at a beautiful little campsite in the Victorian high country, and look, it started raining before rain is threatening us, but I'm underneath the awning of the camper trailer and it doesn't get much better than that. So tonight I'm gonna to cook up some old fish cakes. Now, I love fish cakes and um, I usually use a bit of fresh fish. And the thing I like most about fish cakes is you don't have to have the best tasting fish to make great fish cakes. Now, I don't even have any fish that I've caught. I've got tins of tuna and they've just been rolling around the back of the camera car for a little while now. Perfect for this what I'm cooking up tonight. Now, I started off by boiling some potatoes. So I'm just gonna give those a little bit of a mash. And you might be wondering why I'm using a little gas Stay when I've got a perfectly good kitchen right here. Now, it's not because Nick doesn't trust me with his kitchen, it's because he forgot the gas bottle. He had one job. All right, that's looking pretty mashed now. It's a good basis to start building the old fish cakes. You know, the first thing you need is a fish. Now, Graham, I, I, I saw you, mate. What? I saw you straight away going straight into the Waco. No big deal, mate. What are you doing? Just leaning on it. Just leaning on it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I've actually got one. Thanks for asking, though, mate. Do you want a beer? No, I've got one. You sure? Those beers should be nice and Icy cold, you know how I know that, mate? Why? Because I've got an app on my phone that oh, tells me yeah, you've been just how cold that fridge really is. Mate, I'll tell you what, you've, you, for a bloke who doesn't even know anything about social media or the <laughs> uh, Insta, Facebook, Google Grams, <laughs> you know a lot about that app thing that well, tells you. Well, it's great because you can be inside your car, right? You're, in, you're <laughs> yes. in the car and you want to know what your fridge is doing. Actually, I'm giving, I'm giving you a bit of stick, but that is actually it's a, a, it's it's a, a bloody good idea. It's a brilliant thing. Yeah, it really is a good idea. Yeah, that's me. I'm a little surprised you are yeah. using tuna, mate. I don't know what I'm doing here, but I saw these, yeah, I figured yeah. I'd cut them up. All of them. Yeah. Don't, don't start there, but two. No, oh, well, settle down, monkey. Start with like that, mate. Yeah, yeah, I'll get this. I... That's a hell of a lot of fish cakes I reckon I can make out of this. I'm just trying that, to mix that. jeez. Mix that. Bit of onion. Bit of onion, just put that in there. Here we've got a lime here. You're going to put lime juice in there? Yeah, look, you can have lemon, you can have lime. You can do whatever you like. Really. Getting all gourmet, you are. How mate. many of these do you need, you reckon? Oh, a fair bit. Do you know what I'm thinking, mate? No, mate. I'm guessing I've got to put two eggs in here. Now, I just want to see what happens when I put those two eggs in. Well, if, that, if that sort of moistens it up a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to need a little bit more liquid, I think. A little, uh, bit, of, a little bit of forest gold oh, inspiration. what are you doing? Why? It is looking good, actually. Well, well it's not it's looking, looking nah, it's not. It's not, not, not doesn't look, look good. Look, there's, there's a lot better looking meals out there, to be honest with you. Yeah, there. Oh, that's looking, that's the right consistency. That's what I'm after. Oh, that's looking very good. Yeah, it's looking a bit better. Oh, yeah. Chop that up really fine. Well, I'm trying. This one's a well, Cajun sort of spice. Just not take that too much. No, go nuts, go nuts. Go nuts. Oh, that is pretty hot. Go nuts. Seriously. You want to put that in? Yeah, there? mate. Yeah, put that straight in. You ready? Oh, look at that. That's when it starts looking good. Yep. Good. Now, what's the next process here, right, mate? mate? We'll take that off. Yep. Uh, All right, yeah, I'm going to go and start the uh, barbecue thing. Oh, exactly right, mate. Right, back in a minute. We've got some oil heating up in that pan now. I've got some bread crumbs. You could use panko crumbs. You could use crushed cornflakes. You could use nearly anything, really. All right, I'll leave that there. Just sort of, I'm just sort of seeing if this is going to work. You sort of just want to get a ball, get a ball, put it in the breadcrumbs. Yeah, it's starting to warm up, you can hear that. I just want to sort of flatten those out so they cook a little bit evenly. They're just going to go straight into, into the pan. I've got one batch done, another batch on the way. It's fish cakes all day. Yeah. Look at that. Cake me. Take me. Hang on. Look no, they're not straight. done, but these are. No, nah, exactly right. Come on. Hang on. Hook a brother up. Watch your fingers, mate. They're real clean. That's right, yep. Get your laughing gear around that, mate. Whoa, that is a good looking meal, mate. Do you mind if I try a bit? Yeah. There's a fork in my pocket. Uh, Nick, you could have another one, mate. You're a grown lad. There you go, mate. 14 bucks and that's that's enough for all us in the camera crew, so 
That's crazy. That's a lot. It's a couple of bucks worth it. We've got some veggies, of course, on top of that, but mm -hmm. there you go, folks. Fish cakes. If you can't catch a good fish, like this bloke right here, you can cook fish cakes. Just get yourself some tuna, get yourself some potatoes, a couple of other little bits and pieces, and holy heck, you've got yourself some great little fish balls going on. Mate, you've done yourself, mate. I'm going to go and sit by the fire. Yeah. I'm just going to turn these ones over, okay. sit down, and I'll join you guys in a second. Does it get any better than this? Waking up next to a flowing creek in the high country with the smell of bacon cooking on a barbecue plate? No, it really doesn't. This is the full drive capital of Australia now, the big yeah. high country. Yeah, I'd probably have to agree It's there. absolutely sensational. From from easy touring tracks mm. through to comp spec. Yeah. Whatever you want to do in between. It's certainly got that. It's time to hit the track for another awesome day of full driving. Today we're continuing our way up towards Walhalla. We don't expect to get there today and have another butte camp in mind for tonight. As we climb a bit higher, we found ourselves literally in a cloud. Tell you what, high country, just a, it amazes me how quickly things can change. I was sweating, <laughs> sweating running up and down hills, and now I wouldn't go out without my jacket on. We're just coming around the corner now and you can barely see around the corner, it's that thick. What does this do to the track conditions? I imagine they're going to be quite slippery today. Well, so far the track's pretty good, but there's been water running down up and virtually driving up rivers, so it's quite, quite exciting. No, you might have our work cut out for us today, I reckon. Up for a challenge. There sure is. It's a little bit more flow, but not, not too bad. Still pretty nice. And very clear in the middle. Beautiful water. Now the exit's a bit more challenging, guys. It's a bit more chopped up now. Michael and Alan make this look easy. They have made the exit wet. We're going to need a bit more mumbo. Oh, yeah, no, Graham. Graham's got the right idea. Yeah, boys. Oh, uh. A bit more momentum and traction control does the trick. We all follow suit with plenty of momentum up out of the creek. Hey, straight up, second gear low range, baby. Yeah. Nice drive, Nick. And Stu hits it with plenty, and he's up too. We've just come to a bit of a fork in the road here. You've got. Champion Spur sort of goes up this way and you got the old Champion Spur track. Now the problem with the old Champion Spur track is it's not really trailer friendly at all. There's a lot of big switchbacks and um, not a lot of big trees to winch from. So I'm thinking we might have to even split this up. Ah, just What's the plan, Stan? I'm just thinking we might have to split this up, mate. I'm just, we've got the old Champion Spur up here. It's really not trailer friendly. Okay. And um, I want to drive it. Yep. Because it is a shortcut and I want to get up to the top of the hill quick. Heard you say that before. <laughs> but, um, I don't think we can get the trailer up to any problem. Well, how do you think about this plan? If I go, if I continue on the new Champion Spur track, yep. that'll take me down and around a couple of river crossings and I'll meet back up with the old one at the top. Yep. I wouldn't mind photographing a couple of those rivers down the bottom. Mm -hmm. If that's a plan, I can do that. You might lead Nick with I you. can lead Nick, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, I'll take Stu with me. Yep. And I know Michael, he's chairman of the bit to get up there, mate. We're already so halfway up. We should still be in radio contact most of the yeah, way. Exactly so, well, right. I'll be down in the valley for a bit, but when I, I get think, to the top. I think my way's a little bit shorter. I'll beat you, there's no doubt in my mind. I want to put a bit of a wager on this one because we've got a couple of cable trucks. We're going to drive it before you can do the long way around with your photos and all that sort of stuff. I'm willing to put a bet on it. Go, anything you want. Okay, there's a six pack on the line. No, double or nothing. Half a carton. Half a carton. Half... Come on, you confident or what? Well, I'm going to rename this one the GPS Half a Carton Hill because that's because the, that's that's what the you'll time be giving I want. One half a carton, <laughs> here we go. All right, so we're going to do this now? Yeah, done. Starting light right now? Light right now. If I can get this thing started, I'll... Yeah, here we go, baby. Graham doesn't like to lose a bet and he's out of here. How you going back there, Nick? All good? Yeah, good mate. Going good. Cool man, look, we'll take this water crossing here, which will actually be, uh, I think this will cut about 2k off. And then we'll cut up a steep hill. It'll cut a little bit of time off, mate, but I think we're going to do this. We've got this in the bag. I think we've got that, um, that carton ready to go for us. No doubt in my mind, mate. Wow, look at that, will you? Hey, Nick, we've got a cracking little creek crossing here, mate. Um, I'll go ahead first, mate. Yeah, no worries. I'll watch you go through. I'll try and pull you out if you sink. Hey, you know what? I am so confident that we've got this bet in the bag, mate. Just hold there. I'm going to get across and grab a couple of photos of you coming through, mate. Look at this. 
absolutely sensational. <laughs> Those boys are missing out. They really are. All right, I'm gonna jump out. Quick photo of Nick coming across that because it's just too good not to. The boys and I aren't hanging about either. We've got wheels in the air. We start heading up the hill at a rate of knots. <laughs> Here we go. This is gonna be one heck of a drive. I tell you what, no lockers in this car, but. With these sort of hill climbs, throttle control is everything. Smooth and steady on the throttle does the trick. On hills like this, you really want to pick a line and then absolutely commit. I was doing really well, but eventually I'm held up. going to cost us some time but there's nothing for it but to winch yeah this might be me boys a winch yeah i think so i just don't have the traction there's not a winch in australia that gets put through more punishment than the one on the front of my four-wheel drive this grande mark three from adventure kings is the same winch that's been in sooty for the last 12 months but before that i actually stole it out of graham's old d-max so it's had another two years of abuse before that let's see how the internals look after over two years of the toughest four-wheel drive trips ever filmed have a go at that. I'm actually quite shocked to be honest. If you look at the internals alone, you'd be forgiven for thinking it's a different winch, but this is the same winch that's been through all that punishment. That's remarkable. The seals have stopped any water or mud ingress. The brake is in great condition. The gear in and shaft look like they could do a few more years of pulling my heavy four wheel drive out of the hard stuff. Look, there's no doubt about it that we've proved that both the Grande Mark III, like this one right here, and the Dominator X Mark II, both from Adventure Kings, are two of the toughest winches on the market. And you won't believe it, but they both can be bought for under $400. So that makes them absolutely insane value for money. Now, I wanna get this one back together, get it in the front of Sooty again, and I reckon she's got a few more years of heavy duty winching left in her. a bit of a pit stop but that's okay that's okay i still think we're gonna beat the other crew and that's all that matters and we're having a hell of a lot more fun right too just stop. <laughs> like just here hey Sean, i'm not sure if you'll get me mate but you got a copy yeah mate i certainly do hey buddy i'm guessing um give you one car at the top um pretty much just looking around have a look at the view by now would you yeah pretty much mate you you bang on you bang on i'm just looking at the view now it's beautiful like in um it's very steep up here um beautiful part of the world beautiful part of the world so you're at the top, we're about 10 minutes away, we'll, um, we'll see you at the top. Yeah, yeah, I'm almost at the top, I'm not quite, just uh, stops. Myself actually just take a few photos and have a little look around. We've got, we've got a good road ahead, I'll get stuck into it mate, I'll see you there in about, we reckon about 5, 10 minutes. Yeah mate, I'm a, I'll, um, I'll, um, I'll start driving too, cheers mate. Alright mate, catch you there. Still counts as driving if you're on the end of a winch, it's just a slow away. Look, I, the way I see it is you get to stop and really take in the scenery when you're on the end of a winch cable and absolutely loving the high country. This is one heck of a track and I'm so glad I went this way. I'm just a little bit worried about the half a carton though. Graham seems pretty relaxed on the UHF and that's because he stopped for a photo. That, I'll tell you what, that guy. Okay, as you can see, I've positioned myself right next to the river crossing here. Nick's actually gonna come past really close here. I might even get a bit wet if I'm not careful. You can see Nick waiting over there. I'm in position, I'm just gonna get ready. So I've got the camera set on manual mode at 1,250th of a second shutter speed. Really quite fast. I'm also gonna shoot quite a wide angle here and I'm gonna wait until Nick gets nice and close to me. When he does, I'll fire up a few shots. By making it nice and wide, I'm able to fill that frame, really make Nick look like the center of attention. And of course, by using that super fast shutter, I'm gonna freeze all those water droplets that hopefully will be splashing up when he comes across. And then I'm gonna duck out of the way before I get soaked. So that's the basics of it, fast shutter speed, sun's in a perfect position, Nick's waiting to go, we've got a beautiful backdrop. I'm pretty confident this is gonna be a cracking photo. I'll get in a position, we'll call him through. While those guys are taking selfies or whatever they're doing, we're doing some serious recoveries. One hell of a winch. This track is super steep and has some very slippery clay. I'm actually getting a fair bit of traction here with, with just driving as well, so I'm trying not to overstep the winch, but I can pretty much drive most of this. Love tracks like this, just super technical. 
Yeah, I have to winch a little bit, but I reckon I might be able to drive this last little bit here. And here we go, first gear low range. This is costing us some time, but I'm still fairly confident we've got this in the bag. Not much further now. Yes, finally, I'm able to drive the rest. Meanwhile, Graham decided to take a little shortcut, but he might end up regretting that decision. Hey Nick, I reckon if we take this track here, mate, which is fairly steep, but it'll actually take us directly up and over the mountain, we can drop back down into camp. I reckon it'll shave off quite a bit of time. You up for it? Yeah, I'm up for it, mate. Let's do it. All right, let's get into this. Yoo-hoo! First gear, manual. Just crawling my way up. Keeping the revs up, bit of momentum. Good traction on it. Up we go. A little bit of a rut here. Try and centre myself on it. Nah, Nick, hold up, hold up, Nick, hold up, Nick. Well, as you can see, I'm so close to getting up this hill. There's a small pinch here, but I've come over what is pretty common in the high country. They're called erosion mounds. You can see them all the way down this hill, and I've just bottomed out. It was actually my fault. I let momentum go a little bit, so I didn't jump into the air as I came over the erosion mound, and I've got stuck. So, I'm on my own. <laughs> I've got to try and do a self-recovery. Graham is getting stuck into a self-recovery, and he isn't letting safety slip. How darn handy are these remote winch controllers? For solo recoveries, they just make the world a difference. Otherwise, you've got to pull all the rope out, try and guess how much you need, go back, back and forth, back and forth. I can just walk with it. So good. I recommend these highly. And that's all I'm going to need, about a car length. Stewie's having the same dramas as me. This clay hill is just so slippery and steep, and now he's on the winch as well. It's going to get Stu Dog up. He's about halfway up the hill, so with a bit more winching, a few tricky lines and a lot of right foot, he might have half a chance. But something tells me the stakes are about, oh, I don't know, I think we're very close to beating Graham. I've got a good feeling about this. Even though we're in the race, we don't forget safety. Winch blankets are on, we're communicating and standing well clear. All back in it. setups and Stu's almost at the top. The last pinch, he can drive. Okay Nick, I'm gonna start moving off mate. I'm gonna... All right, I'm gonna go mate. You drive, 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 drive. Now it's Nick to follow Graham up. And these guys can't afford to get stuck, or they'll be losing out on some icy cold beers, that's for sure. <laughs> Lucky for me, Nick gets stuck in the same spot as Graham. I've got a plan. It's a bold plan. I'm going to reverse back. Hook you up, mate. I'll be there in a second. Hang on, don't move. Well, you can't move. Just stay there. All right, I'm going to reverse down this hill. Ordinarily, I'd probably just say let's winch up, but I haven't got time. I want to beat Shawno, and I know I can pull him up this hill, so I'm going to go back and hook up that snatch strap and get out of here. Okay, Nick, I'm going to take up the slack. Hang about. What's this? Graham is literally towing Nick and the trailer up the hill using the D-Max. That's it, mate. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Put to the floor, buddy. This can't be happening. Surely that's cheating. But wow, amazing drive. Oh my goodness, this is steep. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Keep going. Last little pinch here. That's it, mate. You're up. You're up. We've still got this bet. Well, according to the VMS, this is the waypoint down here that I gave Graham. If you can follow a map. This is where he should be waiting, but I doubt he'll be waiting because I reckon we might have just scraped in first. Hey, Stu, what do you reckon our chances are, mate? Do you reckon we beat him or what? Oh, I'm pretty confident, but well, you never know, eh? Yeah, I certainly think I am confident, mate. I've got half a carton of beer right on this one, so hopefully. No, hang on. Hang on, they must have cheated somehow. Okay, oh. Unbelievable. I think you've cheated. How could we have cheated? Well. There's no way we could have cheated. Well. We've done like six water crossings, been all around the place. Took the longest route. Oh, I settled down. So 12 of these? We, we, we did about four kilometres. No, it wouldn't have been four. But we did. No. Not uphill, but like all up to get here. Mm. About four mm. kilometres. Mm. 
It's taking you quite some time. Even, <laughs> it's, even, taking us, it's taking us three quarters of a day. Even the rain stopped. It's magnificent now. So, mate, this is my last chilled one. You've got quite a few in the fridge. No, you should, uh, I don't know, mate. Maybe you should just set up the swag. Oh, uh, there's a reception. I've got to, I've got to go. I've got to go. <laughs> Well, I guess Graham's little shortcut and towing stunt worked after all. He might have won this one, but we've got some pretty cool stories to tell at camp. How good is this campsite? Another one of the many great campsites you're going to find in the high country. We're going to get set up, get the fire going, and enjoy another balmy evening here in the high country. We're going to round this night off with a barbecue and a good old yarn over a couple of beers. Getting out with your mates or family to places like this, away from the city, away from the crowds, is what life should be all about. I absolutely love the Aussie bush. It's the final day here in the high country and we're all up early. Graham has gone to explore the surrounds of the camp. <laughs> How cool is that? That's our camp down there at the junction of two rivers. And this right here is Junction Hut. Now, as you can see, it's a very modern hut. And it's, I guess you could say, a modern representation of the old cattlemen's huts that you always see on the posters and on the, uh, the old TV shows like, uh, for example, Craig's Hut, which was actually built for a movie set. It was never actually built, intended to be used as a cattleman's hut. But these still provide a refuge and a place to get to if conditions turn inclement. Now, as you can imagine, this is Victorian high country. It could literally snow here tomorrow. And if you got caught out, these huts were uh, a place of last resort. You get in here, you get a fire going, and they can literally save your life. A lot of the older huts these days that have been burnt down are being replaced with these more modern ones. Don't like them as much, of course they don't look as good. They haven't got that same sort of old world feel, but I must say they are put together extremely well. If it was bucketing down with rain, freezing cold, and you can get in there and put your swag up and get a fire going, I reckon you would absolutely love it. You cannot though argue with the view. Look at that. Our plan for today is to continue our way through this epic bit of high country and wind up in Walhalla. However, we're going to take on a couple of detours so that we can take a look into the past at an old gold mining operation. You've heard the old saying, if you visited the state of Victoria, if you don't like the weather right now, well, wait five minutes, it'll change. And I tell you what, the last couple of days we've had some pretty, well, I wouldn't call it ordinary weather. In fact, my motto, as you probably heard me say in the past, is there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad preparation. It hasn't been bad weather, it's just been a little bit glum, you know that constant drizzle, but this morning, I cannot see a cloud in the sky. In fact, I think it's actually gonna be quite warm today. Uh, six months from now, this track here will probably be under snow. I really do enjoy those temperature changes, those fluctuations in season, because it shows you such a different difference of landscape. And I think today is gonna to be an absolute cracker. For now, I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy a fantastic day of driving in the Victorian high country. Right now, we're on the lookout for the old mining site. And there it is almost taken back by the bush. Let's not forget that this is why many of these tracks exist in the first place. One, two, three. Three seconds for a rock to drop down. I don't know the maths behind that, but that is one heck of a deep hole. Of course, what this is here is the relics of an old gold mine. Now, it just boggles my mind to think that back in the day, this would have been a flood of people out through here. In fact, there would have been hundreds of people working out here. And when you look at the infrastructure that's left, this is just what's left, there would have been a lot more that's still out here. Look at the size of it. It's just, it's on a, on a scale that is hard to fathom. Even bringing it in using today's technology, trucks, helicopters, would still be an undertaking back then. I mean, heck, it would have been blokes with wheelbarrows, horses and carts, that sort of stuff, just to find, in my opinion anyway, a piece of metal that hasn't got that many uses. It's worth a lot of money. Don't really get it. But gold mining in Australia go hand in hand. They're like Vegemite and toast. They are just a part of the landscape. And it's great for me to come out here and check this out. In a world where we're bubble wrapped, ok health and safety, etc., etc., to be able to come out here and peer right down, <laughs> a long way down, into an old mine shaft. This is what makes it for me. I absolutely love it. I'm going to continue looking around because there's a bit more to see yet. It really is amazing what still exists out here in the high country. This place has such a rich history, and it's good to learn a little bit about the pioneers of the area. These little grave sites here are all that remain of the Tomb Bond Cemetery. There'd be a couple of dozen of these just scattered randomly around this area here. And the Tomb Bond Cemetery, which is where we're in now, was established in 1880, and it functioned until the end of the century when this was a thriving community out here. But what really fascinates me about this particular cemetery was in 1939, massive bushfires swept through here and destroyed the cemetery records, which means that even today, the records are utterly incomplete as to exactly who lies where, and in a lot of cases, 
who lies in any of these graves. In fact, one of the signs out the front actually says that if there's any great great grandkids or anyone that might have any information about who could have been buried in this cemetery back in the uh, 1880s right the way through, to please get in touch because a lot of these graves, they simply don't know who lies here today. Moving off now guys, thank you. Michael and Alan know the high country like the back of their hands. We really enjoy travelling with them. Local knowledge and experience is great to be around. And if you go out full driving, it's always worth having a yarn to some locals. Oh, that's steep. My goodness gracious me. You never know when you might get the directions to the best secret camp spot, or the toughest track, or points of interest to visit along the way. Scrabbling for traction. All the way, scrabbling for traction. Big rock step. We've done it. We've done it. <laughs> it seems that more steep tracks are the order of the day. Yeah, it's lost all traction. Nick didn't have the momentum that he needed, so he's going to give it another shot. This time with more mumbo. He's really scrabbling for traction, but he doesn't back off. That's the way, Nick. Good drive, mate. She was seen where Nick struggled, and he's not holding back either. The more steep tracks you drive, the more your confidence will build in what your vehicle can do and how far you can push it. Guys, we're approaching another one of those wonderful high country climbs. This one is really good traction, a little bit loose in places, so a bit of momentum and obviously a nice big safe gap between each car and have some fun. You know, that's a great tip from Alan. We've been doing it all along. It'll be a challenge for the trailer, mate. It'll be tough. <laughs> yeah, thanks, mate. We'll see what happens. This is a steep hill, by goodness. Just gonna try and pick my line a bit, keep a bit of momentum up. Not so much as that you throw yourself offline though, you want to be able to sort of pick and choose where you go a bit. Oh, look at it work. Righto bud, up you come. Oh, she's bouncy. Yeah, she's very steep mate. Yeah, good luck Nick. I've got no words of advice mate, other than jump on that right foot and put it through the floor. I'll be doing the same as you, Sean. I'll let you get up the top first. I feel like the camera crew may not get their four-wheel drive back after this trip. I'm having way too much fun. I've just seen Snowcat Mountain, so I must be getting close to the top. You're right, mate. Come on up. Someone else that's having a lot of fun is Nick, and he's really mastering these tracks now by keeping the loud pedal on and holding that momentum. Come on! Creepers, creepers, what a hill! We're all creeping our way up carefully when suddenly I slip and I'm all out of shape. Ooh. Don't move. Why is he on his hand here? He's almost gone over. Nah, I'm all good. I think I need a bit of left hand down pretty quick though. That was a close call. He might be alright there. I've been in a couple of situations like this before. And in this case, I can back up to bring that wheel back down and have another shot. This time taking the right line. Without lockers, it's a no-go. 
We've made the call to put the winch into action again, as this section is a bit off camber and safety is everything. For an unlocked 80, I think he's put it in some pretty amazing places. The one place I didn't want him to put it, though, was on his roof. I don't think he was ever going to roll it, but and it wouldn't have gone far either. I'm in winching, Shawnee. Off you go. Left hand down. A bit more left. Good job, folks. The rest of this hill should not present any more issues, and I head on up. Nick's following up behind me, and he's got the traction he needs to get right up over the tough section. Good drive! Good drive! Well done! Really good drive! Something else. I didn't expect him to get up through there. All right. See if Shu can do the same. Roll, Stu has that tough section in his sights, but just then, he's in the same predicament as me. Send your dog, what are you doing? Stay right there. Send your dog. Why do you do this to me, send your dog? Do you want to fight you or you just want to winch from there? However, he's more delicately balanced and he's opted straight for the winch to secure the truck from going over. Stop! Even tensioning up the winch slightly, saw him tip the balance back down. Keep coming. With Graham out of the way, Stu winds in the winch and pulls himself up. Go up the hill, Mr. Dog. Up the hill. Whoa, this is serious, huh? That's a lot of fun, eh? How's that, eh? Victorian high country. I've long maintained, still do to this day, that this right here, look at that. This right here is Australia's four-wheel drive adventure capital. Big call, I know. Everyone says Cape York, Kimberley. True to an extent, but I just don't think there's the number. There's not, I guarantee you. There's not the number of hardcore, challenging tracks in neither the Cape nor the Kimberley nor anywhere else in Australia as there is in the Victorian high country. This one here, virtually unknown, but it pretty much kicked our butts, having an absolute blast. We did this trip in late February. It's a great time to travel in the high country. You'll find that between June and October, large sections of the high country are actually closed to seasonal closures. You know, every time I come down to the high country, I'm simply blown away by just how adventurous the place is. It has amazing tracks, spectacular camp. For more on this adventure and to find out all the details that you didn't see on camera, read my article in the magazine. Believe me, you're gonna wanna know this stuff. To view our video extras, visit the 4 Wheel Drive Action website video page and the 4 Wheel Drive Action Facebook page. Pretty soon, we've made it to our goal and our trip is coming to an end. Well, that's a bit of a shock to the system. Civilization after a lot of time in the bush, boys, but we've done it, we've made it. This is Wallala. Yeah, good. This what a beautiful little town, too. Mate, this place is absolutely cracking. Stu, this is one of your favourite spots, eh? Oh, yeah, I love this place, mate. It's something about it. It's just really historic and, you know, for want of a better word, it's pretty. You been up here before, Nick? Uh, it's a cracking spot. I was here maybe four years ago and it's still the place I remember and always want to come back to. Yeah, it's got something about it. You get up here often, Michael? Yeah, a little bit, not too often, but uh, from time to time I do. Well, boys, I don't think I'll have any objection if I suggest we pull up outside one of the pubs and, uh, well, I don't know, maybe go and have a celebratory ale. Oh, mate, you can twist me right around, but yeah, it sounds good. Done deal. Let's head down here and park up and I'll, uh, I'll even let Sean O give us a shout. If you're going to come to the high country, you really ought to drive Woods Point to Walhalla or the other way around. Exactly, mate. Especially when you're taking the scenic way and you get some of those tracks that we drove, yep. the campsites. It really is quintessential high country. It is, and I think, and I've said it before, the high country for me is one of the greatest places in Australia to own a four-wheel drive. To do a trap like that, to come out and land here in this little historic town, just sensational. You've been, we've been in whiny little dirt roads for the last sort of half an hour and yep. we haven't seen a sign of civilization. and then no. to come out here to a historic town. You know what's in this town? I oh, know, mate, there's two of them. There's an old pub. There's an old pub, one's open, one's not. You know what Oof. old pubs do? They serve beers, don't they? And that's because <laughs> I think we need to recap as a group, maybe yeah, do yeah. a few trip notes. Yes, and um, yes, have a meeting. Have a meeting, that sounds very efficient. We'll go to the pub. I think you guys should leave us to it. We'll catch you next time, you know where. On Four Wheel Drive Action. Yoo-hoo, your shout. Definitely. Your shout. I, I came last in that comp, so fair enough. Let's do it. Fair enough. <laughs>
Here I am, camera seat. You usually drive the camera car. I do. Mate, you keep your forks up here. Yeah, the cutler is up there. Your spoon. Just pick a colour. I'm gonna put my, my spoon down the side pocket <laughs> of the door, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put mine up here on the edge. Okay, so what your model's this one? Uh, this is the 1841. 1841, yeah. Model T. I just was playing with one before it came out, I don't think that does anything. That's that for one. the NOS. That's for the NOS, the that's the NOS hill. button. Yeah. That, that looks like a storage cupboard or a broken vent, one of the two. Extra airflow, in Sean we trust. We've got aircon. Yeah, there, there we you are. go. There we are. <laughs> put it in gear, put it in gear, boys. Oh yeah, the handbrake doesn't work. No, they never do, do that. You can go to Zumba, you can go to Roomba, you can do a spin class. Lift weights, pick them up, put them down again. You can do all those fancy aerobics, some yoga, some gym yoga. Or, you can winch up a hill. And then, you too, have a body like mine. I'm like a Greek god. A fat, short, hairy Greek god. Danny DeVito. I don't see anybody or anything. Someone should yell out when they want something done. Honestly, I couldn't go forward or back. If I just had, if I just farted coming up here, I would have done that. The ball's in your court. Whatever you do with it, it's up to you, but the game is in your hands. Drive to the top if you want to. Alright, I'm good. Oh you darling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Christ almighty, you must be cold in there. <laughs> Here's a joke for you. Why did the koala fall out of the tree? Because it was dead. Save me, the world is rising. Sweet Jesus, take a blame. Why did the second quail fall out of the tree? Come on. It was hit by the first one. The world is rising. Sweet Jesus, take a blame. Why did the third quail fall out of the tree? Thought it was a game. After the rain, after the rain. Yes. <laughs>